Hello, this video will show you how to build a toaster oven in SOLIDWORKS. So here are my two master sketches that will be guiding the design. So the side sketch uh, for the right proportion should be roughly 8 inches by 8 inches, but you can design a side profile to match whatever brand language um, you may want and you're trying to match, um, you know, sort of within this square or even slightly outside of it. Um, the front sketch basically has the toaster divided into even sections. Um, so this is sort of the base. This here will be the door. This is the control panel, uh, which is typically on the side, but you can put it wherever you want. Um, it's your design. Uh, it's also typical to sort of have like two end caps that are roughly the same size or mirrored. And then of course, there'll be like a roof. Um, so that's sort of what each of these sections represent. And these numbers roughly represent a measured existing toaster. Uh, for guidance. So to start off with, we're going to make a new sketch on the right plane. So I can click on the right plane, click on the sketch tab, and click on this to enter sketch world. I know I'm there because of the icons on the top right, and because this button looks like it's pressed down. I can then take the side master and then click on convert entities to copy it. Um, now I only want the sort of like main shape, so I'm going to trim the entities. You can also get to this with hotkey T for trim. I like trim to closest, and basically we're just gonna cut away um, these portions that we don't need, uh, and then click on the checkbox. Um, and so now we should have you know, a closed square, or closed shape rather. And so while I'm still inside of the sketch, I'm gonna go to the features and click on extrude, and you can see it highlights it yellow um, and gives us extrude options. Now, the default extrude is like set to this blind option, uh, which you're probably familiar with. You type in a value and it goes to that distance. Uh, there are some other options here. You could do mid plane because we're extruding from the middle and sort of dial in a value that reaches the width. But my preference here is to do up to vertex and click on an endpoint from the front master. And this way the front sketch will determine the width of your toaster. Um, so it just builds it a little bit more robust. It allows you to edit the overall toaster width uh, by just editing the main sketch. Now we need it to go both directions. So I'm going to click on this and click on up to vertex again and click on this other endpoint here. It doesn't matter which endpoint you pick, just as long as it's one of these four widest ones. Um, now it's worth mentioning, this is my advice, it's worth mentioning you could build this in half and mirror it at the end. That's also another um, efficient SOLIDWORKS method. The reason I'm not doing that is because my control panel is asymmetric. It's off to one side. So this is not a pure mirrored object. Um, so I guess it also can depend on your design. Um, so I'm just going to reselect that and then click on the green check. Uh, I lost my other selection here apparently when I clicked away. Now one thing I did forget to mention, uh, you, let's keep going this way for now. Um, the next step is to split our toaster up into the different sections that I previously mentioned. So I'm going to create a new sketch on the front plane. I'm going to get there with the hotkey this time by pressing Alt and S or Option S on a Mac. I'm going to select the front plane, uh, or sorry, the front master here, and I'm just going to convert entities on the entire sketch. Now this is going to be a new command. Um, it's called split. You could certainly do this with it, like extrude cuts, but that would take several commands. So split will get us there faster. It's a pretty easy command to use. So while we're still in the sketch, I'm going to click on split. Uh, I'm going to click OK. If you have a pop up, just click OK. Um, so we're, we're using this sketch to divide this body up into the different sections. Um, now the way you start dividing is you can see this section here that says resulting bodies. I can click in this table and I can just start clicking um, and selecting out different pieces. Now, really by selecting all these interior ones, it will by default like uh, give me these outside ones as well. But if you want to just select every single part you want, you should see all these boxes checked. You can then click the green check and you can see now in my bodies folder, I have all of these different bodies split out. Uh, it's just a quick way to sort of divide this model up. Um, everything is sort of line to line. Um, which when you render it, you know, you won't see those those separations, but if you put a fillet on those corners, it'll render it like a real part line. Now, at some point we want to fillet this, and this is what I was starting to say earlier. Um, now you can only fillet one body at a time, so I can't like select this edge and this edge. So maybe a quicker way, this would be a good instance to come back and edit this sketch here and use the sketch fillet command, which you can find on this tab. 
and type in a value um, that matches again your design language. So in this case, I'm just sort of arbitrarily picking three quarters of an inch. And basically for every two lines you select, it'll throw a uh, radius in between them. And I can just work my way all the way around this model and do that. If I wanna have different values here, you know, I can sort of delete this last one, click the green check, um, type in like a new value, like maybe two inches for this like front nose section and then click a green check. Um, and now when I exit the sketch, everything should still work, but now we have these curves through. So it's just a slightly like efficient build. Um, so this is where the internal components will go. I'm gonna, there will be a provided sort of like interior oven um, with components. And so this will sort of represent where the door is. This is like the bottom tray. One thing we want to do to this is to use a shell command. Um, what this does is it basically hollows the object out. So on the features tab, I'm going to click on shell. And then it's going to bring up this property dialog. And all it, it's asking me two things. Um, you can ignore this multi-thickness. It's asking me two things. What thickness do we want the walls to be? And what face do we want to be open? So I'm just simply going to click on this top face of the base. Um, here, any value between 0.1 or 0.25 should be good, um, somewhat arbitrary. Um, and so now this gives us like a bit of a pocket. So, you know, there's going to be like a burner down here uh, as part of the toaster. So we want to create mounting points for the knobs on the control panel. Um, the knobs should sit on a flat face so that they mount properly. Um, so you want to make sure your control panel is flat, and that way you can also create a sketch directly on that face by selecting it and then clicking the sketch tab. Um, so now if I select a normal view, it will rotate it so that this is perpendicular to our point of view. And I'm going to sketch a couple circles by pressing O, or you can find the icon up here. Um, and I'm just going to create two circles right on top of each other. Now this outside circle is going to represent the overall width or diameter of the knob. I believe if you followed the tutorial, it should be something about 1.2. Of course, you may have your own design, so match that. And I guess I should say you should have your own design for this final build. It cannot be the knob from the demo. And then the center should be 0.2, which is sort of the mounting point, um, which will get you in the assembly portion. And so this outer circle is simply just to give you a positioning idea. So I'm going to select this and just tell SolidWorks to make it for construction. Um, it, it just makes sure that that way your knob, you know, won't be hanging off the control panel or, or something. It helps with the placement. And now, of course, we need uh, two of these, um, you know, for the two different burners. And so I'm just simply going to select both the big circles and tell them to be equal. And I'm going to select both the little circles and tell them to be equal. That way, no matter if I have to change these, um, everything will automatically update. And then I'm going to set both of these features to be for construction, because the only holes we want to cut is these like little center ones, which the knob will mount to and sort of turn within. Um, so you can kind of position that where it makes sense for you. When you're still in the sketch, go to extruded cut. Uh, the depth of the cut doesn't really matter. Um, it can be this, this long if you want. Maybe if you're going to do a render from the back, obviously you don't want it to come out the back. I'm just probably going to do like 0.5 or something um, and then click on the check. And so this will give us a point to put the knobs uh, when we do the assembly. Um, so this next one is creating the door, this next step. Uh, this is slightly, um, these will be new commands and we'll get into some very light surfacing, but I think it's the simplest and easiest way to do this. Um, so we basically want like this face to be the door. Um, and but this whole body, if I right click on this and click on isolate, you know, it's kind of chunky. Uh, if we wanted to use an existing command that we've already know, uh, seen, you could shell. This is kind of like a backwards way to do this. You could shell like all these faces away. And if I click check, it's going to leave us with this front face at point two. Um, but what that does is if if we need a back panel here, uh, which again, if you're doing like a, a rendering from the back for some reason, um, you're going to have to recreate this. So that's one way to use an existing command. I think the better way to do this, um, again, is to go to the surfaces tab. And it's really two commands. The first command is offset surface. So I'm going to load this 
and it's asking us which surfaces we want to offset. And here you're just going to want to click on the faces that you want the door to be. Now it is an offset, so it's trying to bump it forwards. We just want to set this to zero. And you'll notice it's going to change this from offset surface to now copy surface because there's no change to it. So we're literally just copying this face and then you can click the green check. Now if I right click on this and hide this big body, you can see it's like slightly outlined in blue. We have a surface here. The next command is we're going to load the thicken command also from the surfaces tab. And here it's just asking us which surface do we want to thicken. We've already created one so we can select that. It highlights it in yellow. The thing to be aware of is like the direction it's going. So if I click on this, you can see it bumps it out with the preview. This is the default. It looks like it bumped it in. Again, this thickness doesn't matter anywhere from 0.1 to 0 0.2. Um, now it is key to uncheck this box. We do not want the, we want this door to be its own body. If we leave this merged, it's going to kind of like combine everything it's touching. We don't want that. So I'm going to click on the green check. Uh, and now finally to sort of seal the deal on this door, we can right click on this and we can say change transparency. And now it looks like we have this sort of glass door on the front of our toaster. Um, really at this point, the main parts are done. Uh, the last things to do would be to put some fillets on here. So, you know, I'm going to put one on this side. It, it, it is worth mentioning that if you do a lot of, you know, post work on this, uh, what I'm calling the side panel, um, I guess there's two different ways to do this, right? So I'm going to hide this top face. Um, I think it's a good idea to put a small fillet, you know, 0.05 or something like that on this edge. And again, this is for the rendering. It's going to give you kind of a realistic looking part line. Um, you could continue to do this, you know, for, for this other side and just repeat your commands. But let's say you're doing a little bit more um, design work to the side panel. So I'm going to just scroll this back here and pretend that that's what's happening. Um, so on the right plane, you know, maybe I, I want to create uh, sort of like a perforated pattern for the, uh, you know, the heating elements. And I'm just going to quickly pattern this and just sort of do an extrude cut. Now in this case, I'm going to just select this face and have it cut 0.5 into it. I just want to make sure it's only cutting this surface panel. Instead of having to redo this again on the other side, you could just simply do a mirror command. So I can select the right plane, load the mirror command, choose bodies to mirror, not features, because you've done a lot of work to this one. And now you can click on this. And so all the work you've done is now also on the left side, it's symmetrical. So just keep that in mind. That's not um, part of the steps, um, but it's just a, a more efficient way to work if you need to, to work that way. Um, and then finally, you do need to have, you know, feet. Uh, again, you could, before you mirror this, just build sort of like integrated feet into here if you wanted. Um, again, whatever your decisions are ma you're making, you should be matching your brand language. Um, so, so keep that in mind. Uh, you can also mirror within a sketch. So I could, for example, select these two and click on the mirror, and it just pops this over here. And here I can sort of do like a mid-plane, make sure that I'm only merging with the side panel. I'm not accidentally merging with something else. And now when I mirror this, I have feet on the other side. So you may end up with like some solid bodies that you don't need. You can always select them from the tree and hit delete. Um, and it'll add a delete body command. Not necessary. Um, if, you, if you don't do this, they will come into Keyshot when you import them. So you just need to remember in Keyshot to like find the bodies and hide them. I, I tend to like to keep things organized. So I typically um, we'll delete that. Uh, and there you go. You should uh, have a toaster. If you want to do a back panel, um, you can repeat the process to make the door um, and just, you know, do the offset surface, select the same back faces. I think in this case, there's only two. Copy the surface at a zero offset. Um, I'm going to hide this main body again. Honestly, for the render, it's probably good enough to just leave that, but best practice would be to thicken this again. Again, make sure you're not merging. And this way, I, uh, there's no requirement to have a back render of your toaster, but if for some reason you want it, um, I would definitely encourage putting that in. Um, the good news is the oven that we put in the center, it will hide this back panel. So even if you have sort of a gap here, 
the renders we need, um, it probably won't reveal that gap. All right, and there's a toaster in SOLIDWORKS.